going to do that. Ow! Naughty. There's too much nipping. <laughs> He's a palm cockatoo. Oh, my role mostly involves hand rearing, so raising baby birds. I'm pretty sure I hand raise these guys. No, no, not the microphone. <laughs> Come on. No. You are the worst. What are you doing? See? Oh! I can't get rid of you. My name is Mark. I'm a junior animal care officer at the bird park. So I'm kind of like a foster parent for these birds. This is what we call candling. We quickly shine a light through the egg. We check um, how it's developing. Some of the parents are also not very experienced. Uh, they might just maybe raise one chick out of a bunch of three. And there's a higher chance that they survive with us. This one hatched yesterday. It's one of the threatened species. It's a blue-eyed cockatoo. Yeah, the first thing we do every morning is just do uh, like a first check, to make sure everyone's alive. If they make it past their first week, you can breathe a bit. A bird version of baby's milk. So it's all like synthetic, yeah. made from like plants and fruit. With a really valuable bird, I'll be at home maybe just worrying about it for a bit. I think when I first started, I was like, why am I feeding this little like, you know, like jelly bean sized thing? And they're really young, they um, get a little bit confused if they want to breathe or if they want to swallow food. So you have to really watch the chick carefully. If you are a bit late or a bit early, you might decide to take a breath or get food or fluid into their lungs and they'll die. If you get birds that haven't been bred in several years and then you're the one responsible for its survival, that can be quite stressful. Yeah, they just follow. Uh, birds uh, don't really chew. They just... You want some more? Oh. Yeah, he's in a poo. <laughs> oh, he's... Wait. Oh, not yet. Maybe he needs a bit more food to get it going. Hey! Come on. Uh, is he gonna do it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> We actually get very excited when they poo, especially, especially at this age. I think he's already gone back to a food coma, yeah. <laughs> we try to group them, we try to flock them from young. So at least they grow up and they, you know, uh, in a way have friends, I guess. They get along pretty well, you always see them huddling for the extra, I think, security as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for some reason, maybe not. I don't know, I think it's, they're quite comfortable uh, in their little corners in here and taking them out. I can't even hear myself now. <laughs> some of them will go to the stage where they'll try to get your attention by trying all sorts of things. Like, he's begging for food, that's what he's doing. So you notice the rest don't do that. It's this behavior that we try to ignore. Because uh, if you react to it, um, you'll do it more often. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he still hasn't quite uh, learned how to perch probably.
try to find Jaya. Oh, there you are. Come on. Here. Come on. That's it. Good bird. Hello. Hi. When I see uh, the birds grow up and uh, join the aviaries, it definitely um, is really fulfilling. Especially when you take a, long, a walk around the park and then the aviaries and you recognize birds that you have a personal relationship with. And even more so that certain species. I think to be involved in that process and contributing to conservation, I think is extremely meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, see, he loves, he likes hats. <coughs> He's really enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs>